Hey, what's up everybody? So welcome back to the part number four. So in this video, I'm going to explain that how we can work with the item count. As I discussed that we are able to see that counter a very nice looking uh, batch of counter. And also we need to do another um, uh, functionality that if the product is added and if I just try to add that again, and you see here the product is added twice. I don't need the same product to be added twice. All right. So these are the two things. And the last thing is that we need to remove that product right from the card. And if, if we don't need that, right. So let's jump into the, into the coding section here. So first I'm going to work with the counter. I need to work with the counter that if we have like, uh, if I have like three products in the card and, and you, and it, it should show the counter on base of the uh, products that we added, right? So let's go inside our lib folder and then right inside the lib folder we have a screens and inside screen that's the uh, product listing screen that's where you see that all the stuff is here right so here right inside my actions you see here we have an icon button here so we need to implement here block builder and block builder help us to to get the data from the state and show it on our ui right so the, the, there are a couple of things that I need to do here. The first thing that I'm going to do here is right inside the icon button, I'm going to use here, wrap this with it, just like what we did in the car listing screen, we use here block builder. So I'm going to use here block builder and right inside the block builder, I'm going to use here the card block and the uh, card state, right? as simple as that so state will help us to get the data to it so inside here we have a builder and builder provide us the context and the state and right inside here and you see here it always return block builder always returns something so this child we don't need anything right from here so i'm going to cut this out from here and still i'm not going to write anything here because we have to implement some conditions so we need to define here the count so i'm going to create here a variable with the name of count and with the help of state we are able to get the card items dot length and right after that i'm going to implement the stack so the reason why i'm going to use here stack because stack help us to actually it is the layer it anything that we need on top of something we are able to get it through the stack we can position it through the, through some counter because i need to display the counter right on the top of that icon button i'm going to use here a very good widget which is known as stack and right inside stack we have a children and i'm going to paste everything right inside that what we have used so now this count needs to be shown so i need to do here is right after the icon button i'm going to use here position widget so let me write here position and right inside that position i'm going to define that counter inside that so let's going to do here is define the container and right inside that container i'm going to give it some kind of padding you can give what up what, what do you feel better in your ui i'm just going to show you real quick so add incest all um and right inside here I'm going to define, let's give it the uh, all values of six. So I'm happy with the six. You can give whatever you feel comfortable with. So let's give it some decoration and give it some color. So I'm going to use a box decoration and right inside box decoration, we have a color property and let's give it the color of the batch of colors dot red. And we also have the border radius. I'm just going to make it a little circular. So you can use here a property, which is known as the border radius dot um, where it goes. So border radius dot circle. There it is, right? And inside, I'm going to give it the radius of 10, whatever you feel comfortable with. All right. So this is the part of this. And right after that, we have some constraints. We can also give some constraints like uh, uh, box constraints. So I'm going to give it the uh, const of box constraints and give it some width and the height. So I'm going to give it the uh, min width of min height of 15. And I'm happy with the uh, min width as well. So let's give it that of 10. And this is actually what is wrapped in the red. That is what we have put everything in the range. So next we have to display the text and we have to use here a actually i just need to remove this so inside child i'm going to display my counter so let's give it the single quotes and bring this in with the help of dollar simple you can do like this to dollar count and that's going to show you the the uh, counter i'm going to do some styling so right inside the text widget there is the uh, styling i'm, I'm going to use here the uh, const and make that text style 
and uh, I'm going to give it the uh, color of white of the uh, inside the counter. I'm going to give that color to be white so it looks more visible and I'm going to give it the uh, font size of 8 and make that into the center. So let's give it here the property which I believe it should be. Um, let me go right into it and so I'm going to give it the uh, text align and let's give it the text align dot center make sure that it should be out of the style right you can see here that this is the text style it ends from here and it should be out of it so that's the text align uh, a center i'm gonna indent that and control shift f which is fine i think there is no need of that let me refresh this and see if we are able to see the counter uh, in our on our app right so let's go here right inside here and you see here a nice looking counter which shows zero by default and if i'm going to add one of them you see it's going to add one if it's visible for you you can check in your code and if it's it's working in my uh, on my screen if you can see so if i'm going to add three and you now see that the three product has been added to the card and i'm able to navigate on the uh, my card listing screen right all right, so this has been done and as you could see if i'm just trying to add another product you see i'm actually getting an at the same product twice i i don't need that i need to show the message that the product has been added twice so for this purpose i'm going to go re really down to it and that's where we are actually adding the adding the product for the card so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to cut this out and don't remove this because we are going to use it later and um, even though I, what actually i need is i just need to remove um, this part that's fine the card block is fine here and i also need to create here another variable let's give it the name of card items so how many items that we have in the card so we can get it to the block so card block dot state dot card item it's very much similar like we need to get the card items that we have inside for inside this variable we can have we can able to get the card items now we have to check we have to apply here the condition that if the card items so if the card items contain something like uh, there is already if there is any product so there is a method of any and uh, we have an element so here right inside the element i'm going to change that to item you can you can name that to be uh, um, you can name that to be a product or whatever you feel comfortable with so it's going to check on base of the id i need if that item dot id already exists with the uh, product dot id that we have so this gonna check the condition and if that is added already so we are gonna show the message and on the other case on the else case which is working fine i simply paste down here the same code that it was working earlier all right, so right inside here, if that product already exists, so I'm gonna do here is real quick, I'm gonna copy this message here and you can change that to product already uh, added to the card. So as simple as that. So it's check if that card items is exist already with the same ID. So that's the most appropriate way to check on base of the ID. You can either check with the help of the uh, you can check on based of the name, but names can be similar, so it's always be a good approach to check on based of the ID. All right, so that's as simple as that. So I hope this is gonna work. Let me refresh this and check this out. So I'm gonna refresh this and let's go back here and you see that our counter is zero. And if I'm gonna add the product, let's add two product. And if I'm gonna add the same product again, you see that the product already added to the card and if I go right here there is no any card item uh, with the duplicated product added here right so we are good to go with the two things right and uh, I just need to this looks very ugly to the debug I'm just gonna go to my main dot dart file and change that to be uh, to make that false right as simple as that let me refresh this and you see here that now that that badge or that banner is gonna remove from here right all right, so let's go to the to the very last thing uh, in this video that I'm gonna do here is so if I go to my listing page, uh, let me add one more product here, and if I go right up here, I just need to to remove this product from here by when I click on this button. So for this, and we need some event, we need some input to perform an action. 
So the first thing always good to go is to go inside your event and define the uh, removed, uh, uh, remove from card uh, event. Let's create that. So I'm going to do here is, so let's first create that after the uh, add to cart class. So let's create here a class with the name of remove from cart. And that's going to extend that from the cart event. And right inside here, I'm going to define again the model that we have. So that's it. And also, I need to make a constructor of it and define the product into it, just like we did on for the add to cart. So this dot product. And we also need to override the list. So let me override it. And that's the beauty of the equitable, right? So list object um, get props and make that to the product. So it's going to remove the product from the card if there is, exists, but it's still not going to work because we haven't defined that event inside the block. So let me go inside the block and I'm going to define here the event that is going to remove it from here. So let's go inside add to card block and right after the add to card event, I also need to, uh, I'm also going to define here the condition else if, because we're going to have more uh, conditions later on. We are going to check the request of that. So that is why I'm going to use here else if. And uh, let's define here. Event is remove from card. Uh, oops, remove from card. So right up inside it, I'm going to create here a variable with the name of the same updated card. Uh, because we are going to update the card value if something is removed from the list. Very similar from top. So list product. So I need to remove it from the product. So list product dot from let's again go to this card items and remove it from it so over here we are going to use here remove method and simply pass the even here even dot product and emit the state so let's define here card state very much identical nothing different all i did is just simply use here the remove uh, remove method and on the top of it i've used here add method and this is going to add the item to the list this is going to remove the items from the list right so these are the two events that i do but it's still not going to work because we have to define that condition right inside our cart list screen and that's where you see we have our on press and there, that's where i'm going to define my uh, block so in order to provide that simply all i'm going to do here is simply go and do nothing just define a variable card block equal to we are we know we are going to work with the events so i'm going to use here block provider and so block provider dot off context and we also need to define here the name of the block which is the card block and at the end I'm going to remove this so cart block dot add so remember this add is going to do is to get the event so remove from cart and as simple as that I'm going to remove it from the from the items that we have so cart items and let's give it here the index and that's it and I hope this is going to work very very fine so let me refresh this and check this out either we are going to work with this or not so I refresh this and uh, we are going to implement all the functionality. So let's add one product, two. And if I'm going to add three, let's add three products. If I add the same product twice, you see the product already added to the cart. We have three items in the item count. And if I'm going to remove the product three from here, and you see now the product has been removed. Let me add, remove the two, one. And if I go back here, you see the counter is zero. So we are good to go. We have done. Uh, we are able to add the product to the card. We are able to show the counter on top of it. We are able to um, to uh, avoid the duplicated products to be added. So approximately, we are left with the only one thing that how we can check out once we have added the product to the card and we are able to print that all the response that we get from the uh, transaction show the dialogue of successfully transaction that hopefully that's what I'm going to do in the very last part of this video expected is that this is going to be the next is going to be the last video so I hope you guys love it so please must subscribe I'm going to show you more interesting video in the last part